more paperwork there's maybe more paperwork and um, so that brought a lot of anxiety however um, because of the training we received <coughs> which was very well done um, very clearly we, we could see how useful it would be clinically first thoughts were oh my god there was a, um, there was lots of different forms and trying to get my head around them all and trying to remember what comes at the beginning what comes at the end what what comes at the, you know what comes at the beginning middle end um, and how is all going to fit, fit together how am I going to just organize it all it was quite overwhelming yeah, my experience of first using the outcome measures uh, in a session uh, was quite interesting. Uh, first of all, I had to keep track of all the the uh, the, the paperwork uh, and uh, to ensure that it's all uh, given out to the young person or the parent in the session, and also to uh, to make sure that it fits within the session time. So it was a bit of an interesting experience, but also getting familiar with the with the paperwork. Um, Eventually, with uh, continuous practice, I think it's become quite familiar and uh, um, I've, I've kind of uh, gotten on with it, really. Yeah. It was definitely a bit more... Um, it wasn't a chore. It was something that had to be... Rem that I have to remember, so it was a bit more pressure on myself before. Now is um, I just have to incorporate it as one of my clinical tool and, and clinical skill rather than using it as um, as a paper exercise. And I think that's the difference. Before it was a one more form to do. <clears throat> Once I've you know used it in my clinical formulation, then it was clear that that was something that I, I that was a clinical tool not just an exercise to do so now it's much easier and um, and I feel much more confident significantly improved in terms of um, myself getting familiar with uh, which questionnaires uh, to give out to the young person and at what time and by so doing I have learned to manage the time what what, what time of the session to give out the questionnaires the session, the, uh, the kind of session um, by session outcome uh, uh, questionnaires at the end and kind of budgeting my time for the session. So I've become quite familiar with them and I've learned to fit them into the session time and it's become quite easy and um, um, familiar, I should say. I kind of know where I'm, where I'm going or what I need to prepare, what I need to have for each client. Mm -hmm. If I'm having it for the parent, for the child, I know that there's this version, that version. Yeah, it just it seems to fit a bit better now. Interestingly, the young people and the family and the parents or carers um, responded really well in the first place. Um, they wanted to, to kind of give feedback. I, I noticed that, that some of them really were kind of keen to give feedback in terms of how was the session and how they were feeling at the beginning of the session and how they felt like they, um, they were um, attended to in the, in the course of the session. So I, I realized that some of them were even reminding me, have you given me this questionnaire at the end of it? And uh, I, want to, I want to fill out the paperwork. And so uh, with, with time, they became quite uh, um, keen to do these, these questionnaires and I think they really wanted to give feedback. So the response was really good in the first place and um, towards the end of therapy still yeah, they, they, they really came to, to kind of give feedback to, to me and um, to whoever is going to see this question. They, they, they start to own it in a way or partially own it because they, they feel that it's part of the process and uh, they know that it's part of the, 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 uh, the session routine that we do uh, uh, how are things at the beginning of the session and uh, how was the session at the end of the session so it became part of the part of the experience really so they started to own it partially the kids so. more so I don't know if they understand it fully they like I think they like the ones like the measures of how was this meeting but the, in terms of symptom type symptom trackers I don't know if they get those completely but I think the, the parents do and the parents that I've worked with have yeah, they've quite 
they My experience with the family is um, that they actually quite like it because it helps to be more focused about what the issues are because sometimes they've, they've been in, in a difficult situation for quite a while and they're not very clear anymore about what are the issues but having this question especially ARCAD can be quite helpful in focusing on what we're going to talk about what is the work going to be focusing on and having the goal measures as well is quite useful. Young people want to give their feedback about how clinicians are doing and so the sessions by session feedback is very useful and the parents as well can give feedback on the, on the clinician which is not necessarily something that we're used to so it might feel a bit uncomfortable at first but I think, you know, it's supposed to be a two-way process. That's what the Therapeutic Alliance is supposed to be, is a dialogue. So having this opportunity for them to actually say if they felt listened to, if they felt that they could talk about anything, has been very useful. And as, as I said, you know, that's something that has come out of the service user's feedback. I have found them useful. I was quite surprised. I think my previous experience of STQs was I, I get them filled out and then they sit for, for admin to do something or other with them and never see them again. Whereas now when I when I can score them up myself and see, okay, this means around about this and it's just a bit more meaningful. And then when you track it, so by the end of the session when I can compare beginning to end, I'm like, oh, that, that's good. I did make a change. I did help something. Okay. But as a clinician, I find it helpful because I'm like, I can see I'm going on the right track. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing something right, and that's quite reassuring for your own work. One time I was using the RCADs with them, um, because they said they talked to us about, you know, you can use the RCADs more in session, so do it with the client as opposed to in the post. And I was like, oh, God, I don't know if I want to do this. is going to be like, it's a long-winded form. Do I really want to? And I sat there for the first time with my first client, and she broke down in tears when she got to one of the questions and I thought basically she hadn't filled it she hadn't filled in some of it so when I then probed her I thought well you know you've missed something out here or just you know why or do you not understand the question and she broke down in tears and and now I found it really I was like oh this is great because actually that's where the problem was and it came up and she was just trying to avoid so I found it like really really useful. You get additional information that you um, that uh, you have possibly not being able to get through a conversation with the young mm. person and uh, so the questionnaire has helped to get more additional information and this information is quite valuable in form of assessment and uh, in the course of therapy as well as uh, um, at the end. And they are useful clinical tools uh, in terms of assessment, in terms of uh, tracking progress, uh, tracking the uh, pro progress on the goal set out in the beginning of therapy. And um, I think it's a very essential to tool of, of therapy that should be used from the beginning to the end, as well as uh, therapists' uh, own professional experience. And, and I think it also helps to, to give supervisors kind of um, additional uh, information from what is going on in therapy and many times I've taken my um, goal tracking uh, uh, measures to, to supervision and we together we can sit and think about how much progress has been made, why, why, what is the problem, how can we, what can we do in the next session. So I found them quite useful and I think they are an essential tool. For Seeing the progress or even the regression either for the child, the parent or the clinician can also be a good way, um, um, a good opportunity to discuss what might be going on at that time, what might be um, making the situation worse or better and then we can probably move on quicker as well and still I, I liked what I liked about the outcome measures is the focus that he helps us to have. Session by session feedback I find it quite a very useful very useful um, because he allows me to prepare for the next session as well and the symptom tracker as well is quite useful especially for the family especially for parents because they can't sometimes see the difference because they're so in, ingrained in a particular situation that it takes them a while to see the progress of the child but if they're able to see on a weekly basis that actually what they rated as a two is now a four within a week or two then they can they, they start believing in the process as well and um, and I think the engagement is stronger. Just to, track it, just, just to 
actually see change. It's, it's, I think it's all fair and well when you can hear about it, but to see it, it's um, more tangible. Bring the pack, sit and read it. You really have, you know, get your head around it. Um, do um, a random trial um, with a fake client and score it so you know how it will look like. Um, have an understanding of it. So give you yourself, a, you know, an hour or two to actually do that, and then believe that is actually something that will improve your practice and enable you to develop further skills rather than something that will hinder you. Um, never apologise for the length of the, um, of the form because otherwise you're already kind of demoting the, the family to use it. Um, so that's something that we really have to buy into ourselves and then sell it. And this is helpful. I'm using, you know, I would like you to fill that form because it helps me to understand more your, in a better way your problem and also to kind of be quite concise about what the difficulties are. So you introduce it that way rather than, oh, this is something I've been asked to do. Um, give feedback to the family about the questionnaires. The SDQs or the goals, I mean, not the goals because we don't need to, but um, the, the RCAD, we need to give feedback because otherwise they don't understand it. So when we ask them to do it again, they don't want to do it or they feel like, well, they just tick anything to please us. So that's very important, I think. That's probably one of the, my top tips that I would say, give feedback to the family about the questionnaires that they filled in. So our commissioners would be, please be open-minded. Um, that there are benefits. Yes, there is a reality that it can feel like you're getting bogged down in paper. That, I think that's a realistic side of it, but there are benefits to using it, and it can help your practice it can be quite motivating for the client and for the practitioner. Um, maybe it would just it would take some organisation at the beginning, but it, it becomes easier. One or two, three uh, tips that I could give. Uh, one uh, is to uh, not to kind of uh, I know at the beginning it can be quite uh, anxiety provoking using bringing a, a lot of paperwork into the session and trying to get everything done within the session. I, I remember feeling very anxious and trying to get everything done. But eventually, with co continuous practice, I've gotten used to it. So, um, first tip is not to, to, to worry about the anxiety that they may uh, project in, in the course of therapy in, in, at the initial stages. And um, the second tip would be uh, <coughs> to continuously use them and uh, remember to use them every, at every session because sometimes the, the clients will remind you what about that questionnaire, what about this one and uh, if you continuously use them, they, they become part of you and uh, they become part of your professional practice. So and, uh, and at the same time, you can also evaluate your, your work in terms of taking them to supervision and seeing how much progress has been made. And at the same time, looking at the data that has been collected, yeah, I think it helps to inform uh, clinical practice. And um, the third one is to, um, to I kind of follow them through from the beginning to the end and uh, uh, collect the data and look at it in terms of, uh, and compare from your own personal experience and uh, observation and at the same time assessment and use the data as an additional kind of uh, reflection in terms of uh, what progress has been made. So it's, it will be good to follow through all the stages of using them from giving them, giving them out to the uh, young person to collecting the data and analyzing it and uh, to looking at how it informs professional practice.